Well, how are you? I want to look at uh, the fact that all the world is guilty before God. Now, if you're not saved, you might not understand this, but the fact is that we've all sinned before God, and so therefore we're guilty of sin, and therefore we're heading down to hell, and God does not want that, so that's why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to be our saviour, to be crucified upon the cross. So all the world guilty before God. Romans 3 verses 19 to 26 says, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. And of course, we've got to realize we're guilty before God before we can ever be saved. In other words, before we can ever have forgiveness for our sins and be at peace with God. Verse 20 says, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. That is in God's sight. Um, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. So we need to understand that the, the law was given so that we might see where we'd gone wrong. That we don't measure up to God's standard at all. Nowhere near, in fact. The only one that measures up to God's standard is the Lord Jesus Christ because he is God in the flesh, God in a body. And so we need to understand this, our great need before the Lord of eternal redemption. Um, so it says here, for by the, therefore by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. In other words, we cannot be saved by doing good works. By even keeping the commandments of the Lord, it will never get us to heaven. We've got to put our faith in Christ to be in heaven. And that's why he left heaven's glory. To come down to live the perfect life upon earth that you and I could never ever live. And then die the perfect death upon the cross. The sacrificial death. Take the sinner's place upon the cross of Calvary for you and for me. Shed his own precious blood, sinless blood on that cross that you and I could receive forgiveness for our sins if we put our faith in him. Now, it's up to us where we uh, will be in eternity. It's either going to be heaven through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, if we believe on him, if we receive him as our savior, or it's going to be down in hell and the lake of fire for all eternity if we turn our back on the love of God. All that's left is the wrath of God. We need to understand that. We need to preach both sides of God, as it were. God is a God of love. That is true. But we just can't say God is love and that's the finish. Full stop. Yes, he is a God of love, but he's also a God of wrath and of judgment. We need to understand, if we do not receive the love of God, there's nothing else available for us but the wrath of God. The wrath of God of God abideth on us. It abides on us. It's hovering over our head if we are without Christ as our Savior. If we have not put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the wrath of God is hovering over your head and it's only a breath away. We don't know when we're going to leave this earth. We need to under understand the frailty of life, you know. Uh, you know, you go to a cemetery and you see People of all ages, there's even babies, you know, that have been buried, so that they've died. In other words, we don't know when we're going to leave this planet, planet Earth. And so it's really urgent that we get right with God. It's absolutely essential and urgent that we get right with God, that we have forgiveness for our sins. Otherwise, we'll die and go down to hell. And that's not what God wants because he is a God of love and he loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus Christ to die that excruciating painful death upon the cross that is the crucifixion <laughs> death upon the cross so that you and I could be made right with God you and I could have forgiveness for our sins So it um, says here, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. So the law is our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might understand where we've gone wrong. 
that we would come to Christ, that we would turn to Christ for our eternal salvation and believe upon him. Uh, it says here, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ un unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Notice what it says here. Notice the wording carefully. It says here, uh, the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. You see, the gospel message goes out unto all. That is, there is provision for all men, women, boys and girls to be saved. But we read here, and upon all them that believe. You see, it only will be any good for you if you believe. You have a responsibility to put your faith in Jesus Christ. Now, if you don't, if you fail to do that, you will be in hell at the moment of death. That is, your spirit and soul will leave your body at the moment of death, and you will be in hell. That terrible place of suffering and burning and torment that God does not want any of us to go to. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. A place where we'll change our mind. Agree with God that you are a sinner. This is what repentance is. And then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And God promises you everlasting life. Through the finished work of Christ, you can be made right in the sight of the Lord if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In other words, we're all guilty of sin before the Lord, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation, that means mercy seat, through faith in his blood. His blood was absolutely essential to be shed, had to be shed, for without the shedding of blood, there is no remission, no forgiveness for our sin. It's always been like that. Even in the Old Testament, we see lots of blood that was shed, of animals that were slain, they were killed, and the blood was shed. This was pointing toward the once for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary. When the soldier came and saw that he was dead already, and they break not his legs, and one of the soldiers came and uh, thrust a, saw, a spear into his side, and forthwith there came out blood and water. That blood still has the power to wash your sins away, my friend, and that's why we preach the gospel, to let you know that you have another opportunity of getting right with God. But if you lose all these opportunities and you die in that condition, you'll be in hell. This is the problem with turning fear to the gospel of Jesus Christ. What does gospel mean? It means good news, glad tidings. It's a great message because it's the message of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only way of salvation. If you want to be in heaven, you'll have to come God's way. And God's way is through the cross and the crucifixion of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, and his precious blood that was shed upon the cross. Yes, um, it says here, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission or the forgiveness of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that is God's righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Have you believed in Jesus? Now, what does Jesus mean? It means Jehovah, the Savior, or the salvation of Jehovah. We've got to understand, salvation is of the Lord. If we're ever going to be saved, let it be God's work. And God has provided the means of salvation, the only means of salvation. Acts 4.12 plainly says, Neither is there salvation in any other, 
For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now this is what man says. Everyone charged with a criminal offence shall have the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty according to law. From what we've read in Romans, God says the opposite. We are guilty until proven innocent through the blood of Christ. To be innocent is to not be guilty of a crime or offence. God wants you to have forgiveness for your sins, therefore not having to face the judgment of God for all eternity in the lake of fire and brimstone. Even though we are born sinners, we can have forgiveness for those sins through the blood of Christ. Colossians uh, chapter 1 verse 14 says, In whom we have redemption, and note this, through his blood. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, through his blood. Redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. Exodus 34, um, verses 1 to 8 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first. Now this, this means cut out two tables of stone like unto the first. Now what happened was this. The children of Israel, well, Moses went up into the uh, Mount Sinai to get the two tables of stone of the, the, the commandments of the Lord, uh, the Ten Commandments from the Lord, uh, written with the finger of God on these tables of two tables of stone. And when he came back, when he came down, he saw that Aaron had got the earrings and all the jewelry, and you know, the um, gold things from the people like jewelry and stuff and melted it down and make it and made a golden calf and the people were worshiping this golden calf and when Moses came down from the um the uh, Mount Sinai he saw the people dancing around uh, as far as I know they were naked uh, dancing around this this golden calf idolizing this you know this idol and so and he out of shock I guess he threw down the uh, shock or maybe anger, you know, righteous anger. That definitely would be righteous anger at that point. <coughs> Excuse me. He threw down the tables of stone and they smashed. They broke. Now that is figurative of you and I breaking the law of God. So what happened was God says, look, you've got to come up to the mount again and I'm going to give you another set. The same written the same things obviously written down but these ones are not going to be broken and that represents the unbroken law by the Lord Jesus Christ and so the one who didn't break the law obviously he's been represented by the the second lot of tables of stone and so these second lot were never broken as I said that speaks of the perfection and the sinlessness of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you and I have broken the laws of God. We are symbolized by the first lot that were broken, that, that Moses threw down in anger and disgust at the people that were worshipping this crazy golden calf. That was one of the commandments. Thou shalt have no other God before me, or thou shalt not make thee a graven image and bow down to it and worship and those sorts of things. So that was one of the commandments they'd broken. Obviously, they'd broken a few more, you know, dancing around with nothing on and all the rest of it. But the point is, there were many people slain at that particular point. So we must understand there are consequences for our sin. For the wages of sin is death. Not only is it physical death, that is the first death, but it's actually the second death as well. And the second death is seen in the revelation of Jesus Christ. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So it's eternal death. It's eternal <laughs> conscious torment. People do not burn up in the eternal burnings. 
they burn forever in conscious torment. This is what you will look forward to if you die without Jesus Christ as your saviour. We will burn forever if we die without Christ. We've got to understand this, how urgent the message of salvation is. Your eternal redemption is absolutely urgent. We must understand how urgent it is. If you die without Christ, you're in big, massive trouble with God. And you and I, We'll have to pay for our sins for all eternity, and it will take eternity to pay for it. In other words, they'll never be paid for. Why not come to Christ? He paid for the sins, for your sins, if you believe on him. If you receive him as your saviour, your sins have been taken care of, my friend. And that's why we get out there and preach the gospel. I mean, although I'm locked down now, obviously I can't get out because of this corona business, but... It's still great to be able to get out on live on Facebook here and actually preach the gospel. It's still great to me to be able to do this. Even though I'm not physically out there on the street, which I love doing every day, I can still get the gospel of Jesus Christ out. And I'm very thankful to the Lord for the opportunity of this technology. I love the technology because it allows us to do things that we could never, ever do years ago. This wouldn't have been heard of, you know. When I was 30 years old or whatever, you'd never hear about this sort of stuff. But now it's good. You know, we've got Zoom, we've got Facebook, we've got YouTube, all this stuff that's really handy. So anyway, I hope you've understood this, that there was the breaking of the law was, um, you know, we've all broken the law and we're all guilty before God. That You know, we've already read that the whole world is guilty before God. And so we need to understand we are in a very dangerous situation without Christ as our saviour. So here, hew the two tables of stone, or cut out two tables of stone, like under the first, and I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first table, which thou breakest, and be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. No man shall come up with thee, neither um, let any man be seen throughout all the mount. Neither let the flocks nor herds feed before that mount. And he hewed two tables of stone, in other words, cut out two tables of stone, like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning and went un up unto Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him. And took in his hand the two tables of stone, and the Lord descended into or in the cloud, and stood with him there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him, and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, be merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. Now Galatians uh, chapter 3 and verses 24 to 26 says this, Wherefore the law, and I've already quoted this, but the law, um, was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God, and I want you to get this, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Jesus. To, so to become a child of God, you've got to put your faith in Christ Jesus. To be born again into God's family through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Mark 14, verses 60 to 64, and the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, uh, saying, Answerest thou nothing? This was at, you know before just before he was crucified. Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee but he held his peace 
The words didn't say anything and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ? In other words, God's anointed, chosen one of God, the son of the blessed. And Jesus said, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes, in other words, tore his clothes, um, and saith, What need we any further witnesses? Ye have heard the blasphemy. What think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. Now, John 10, verses uh, 27 to 33, Lord Jesus speaking, he says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Another proof that a child of God can never, ever lose their salvation. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good uh, works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Uh, Matthew 27, verses 17 and 18. Therefore, when they were come, were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye, this is back to the, uh, before the crucifixion, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. So it's for envy, really, that they delivered him. It wasn't for any sin that he did whatsoever because he didn't do any sin. It's impossible for God to sin. If God sinned, he'd stop being God. He'd cease to be God, wouldn't he? And the Lord Jesus Christ is absolutely without sin. What a wonderful saviour he is. What a wonderful God he is. We see him fully displayed in the person of our Lord and saviour, Jesus Christ. Yet, um, verses 36 and 37 and sitting down, they watched him there. That is, when he was crucified, they sitting down, they watched him there and set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Caiaphas claimed that Jesus was guilty of sedition. Sedition is open uh, conduct such as speech and organization that tends toward rebellion against the established order. And of course, the Lord Jesus Christ was not guilty of that whatsoever. They didn't know what they were talking about. Uh, John 18, verses 33 to 40. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it of me? Sorry, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence or not from here. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate said unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. How can somebody find fault in God? 
There's absolutely no way. He is perfect in every way. From every angle we look at God, he is perfect in every each and every way. So, um, but ye have a, a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21 says, For he, that is the father, hath made him, that is the son, to be sin for us who knew no sin. Did you hear that? The Lord Jesus Christ knew no sin. That would speak of his mind. He's absolutely perfect in thought. And it goes on to say that we, I'll just repeat that. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the righteousness of God is given unto us as a free gift, as well as obviously eternal life and peace with God. All these blessings that we receive, of course, there's many, many more. But we're blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies in Christ. It's a wonderful thing to be saved, my friend. I wonder, are you saved? Isn't it about time you got saved? You got right with God? You received forgiveness for your sins? Why wait any longer when God has made the provision for each and every one of us? Men, women, boys and girls, I don't care who you are, if you're able to listen to this and understand this message, you have a soul that needs to be saved, and it's an urgent matter. You must get right with God. You must have forgiveness for your sin. Otherwise, you'll die and go down to hell. And as I said, God does not want that for any one of us. Now, 1 Peter 2 verse 22 says of Christ, who did no sin. His is indeed. He, he didn't, you know, he's perfect indeed as well. He did no sin. Neither was guile found in his mouth. So in word as well, we see in word. In It says here, neither was guile. That means cunning, craftiness, sneakiness. You know, you know, like a car salesman, you know, how they were politician, you know, how they're, they're, they're generally speaking. I'm not talking about believers now. I'm talking about unbelievers. They're, they're crafty. You know, they're just shonky. You can never trust what they say sort of thing. You know, so Lord Jesus Christ is not like that. He's not like you and I in that sense. So we need to understand that he's totally different to you and I. Yes, and First uh, John chapter 3 and verse 5 says of Christ, and ye know that he, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, was manifested or appeared to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. So even in the Lord Jesus Christ is no sin. See, the Lord Jesus Christ does not have the sinful nature that you and I have. You and I have what we call the flesh. God calls it the flesh. It's a sinful nature that causes us to want to have fun, want to do our own thing, and rebel against the commandments of the Lord and so on. And so the Lord Jesus Christ does not have that. He, you know, he's absolutely perfect in each and every way. So we see here, in him is no sin. But he was manifested to take away our sins. And this is possible right now. He can take away your sins, my friend. And this is why we, as gospel preachers, preach the gospel unto you, that you would be saved, that you would receive forgiveness for your sin. Um, see, the Lord Jesus Christ is perfect in thought, word and deed, as we've said. That's why he could die for our, uh, the sins of the whole of humanity, to make provision for your eternal salvation. So first up, you have to see that you are guilty of sin before the Lord and admit that to God. We call that repentance. It's a change of mind. Agree with God that you are a sinner. Then, to receive forgiveness for your sins, 
You have to put your faith in Christ for your eternal salvation. I want to finish off with a few more verses here and then I'm done. Romans 10 verses 12 to 14. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, or that is or the Gentile. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever, and this can be you, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. No ifs or buts about it. They shall be saved if they call upon the name of the Lord. Are you prepared to call upon the name of the Lord? Will you do that right now? That would be a very wise move. It's an urgent situation, as I keep on saying. We die in our sins. The Lord Jesus Christ said, where I go, that is back to heaven, ye cannot come. So we need to understand our great need of salvation before the Lord. How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? This is what I'm doing. I'm seeking to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to you to give you another opportunity, as I said, to get right with God and receive forgiveness for your sins through the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. I wonder, will you come in repentance toward God, acknowledging your sinful condition before the Lord, realizing you cannot save yourself by any good works that you can do, we cannot impress God whatsoever by doing good works. All we can do is believe on his son and become children of God. Remember, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Are you prepared to put your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, in the Lord Jesus Christ, for your eternal salvation? He's the only way to heaven. Come to the one who said, I am the way, not a way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Have you come in repentance, acknowledging your sinful condition before him, and then putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? And having done that, your soul will be saved. Not because of anything we've done, but because of the finished work of Christ and your right response to that. You can react in the wrong way to this. You could just say, I don't care. She'll be right, mate. It's all good. And if you do that, you'll end up going down to hell. You have to make a decision. You'll either receive Christ or you'll reject or neglect him. Keep on rejecting or neglecting him and finish up suffering for all of eternity because your sins have not been forgiven. God forbid that that would be you. I hope not. My prayer is that your soul will be saved right now. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Have a great night.